Hello guys, welcome to our channel, The Collector's Hub. In the last episode, we reached the VDH Exhibition Hall, however, in order to change it to drill mode, the robot need us to find her sister partner who house half of the key to initiate the mode. If you like this series, since this is our first first-person shooter game in this channel, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you! Yeah, but not all of them. I'll let you know if I find the rest. Scanning the exhibition area. Module head found. Establishing coordinates. Assessing structural integrity. Head location. Chelame floor. Structural integrity compromised. Excessive pressure detected. Excessive pressure? Poor thing. It's crushing her. It's like they dropped a whole building on top of her. Oh, Major, it's just too cruel. It's unbearable. Yeah, okay. I get it. Shit, it's dark here.
complex is an underwater city that has been located at the bottom of Lake Lazur since 1944. The complex is a one-of-a-kind research facility whose primary task is working with special water plants used in the production of polymers. The structure of the complex and the unprecedented precision of its design impressed the world's engineering community so much that in 1954, international investors asked Soviet specialists to build another underwater city off the coast of Iceland. Please select the desired procedure. Please select the desired procedure.
crispy fucking. Where's the shit ass way out of here? Underground or something? Fuck me. Where am I supposed to find the head? You need to enter Icarus Hall. It is located on the second story of this menu. So where's the entrance? Unfortunately, I do not have this information. Everything's got mixed up after the malfunction. No shit, Sherlock. Have you considered following the beluga? How is that supposed to help? I don't know. It's just a suggestion. Well, I guess it can't hurt to try. It's not like we've got a lot of other options. Tereshkova, where's the power room around here? At the very top! <laughs> Fantastic. So we're cut off. Just what I always wanted. So, what was wrong with the real Beta Connectors? Since Collective was originally planned without any discretionary authority, everyone in it was supposed to be equal. Yeah, we already talked about that. Then why'd they need the Beta Connectors? To secure Collective against unforeseen threats from individuals who might wish to control it. That's impossible. Everybody's equal in Collective. Shit! The Alpha Connector! Indeed. Intruders or an opposition force among equals could try to obtain the Alpha Connector. This could lead to human casualties, which would be unacceptable. So how could Beta Connectors stop this from happening? They didn't give their carriers any discretionary authority, but they did allow them to be present within Collective without being a part of it. In other words, they had total autonomy while retaining access to the information network. So what? That's basically what we have right now. You're seeing this from a human perspective. What other kind of perspective could I... Oh, crap. The boss wanted to put beta rings on some robots so no one else in Collective could control them. Indeed they are. At first, Dr. Sechenov planned to order his loyal twins to guard the Alpha Connector. 
While logged into Collective, he could control them from anywhere on Earth. At the same time, no one else would be able to give them orders. They wouldn't even know that they exist. Hold on, Charles. <laughs> I don't quite get it. Would it be possible to launch Collective with everybody equal, then destroy the Alpha Connector? Certainly. But that begs another question. Who would choose to do that? Dr. Sechenov. Are you sure about that, Comrade Major? Yeah. I mean, I guess. So where's the very top?
dumb, endlessly stupid, and I died because of my stupidity. If somebody buries me, put these words on my tombstone. What happened? I tried to run, but I didn't know how to rotate these things on the floor, so I failed. I could have opened the passage. It's a security relay. Looks simple enough. But I panicked and did something stupid. And then wham! Blood everywhere. There was pain and that was it. Yeah, you gotta adjust them by color. Well, shit happens. It's not your fault. I'll tell the tour guide you're, uh, here still. What you got?
the man. Let's see if this thing helps. Did it? Oh yeah. sense that your suit isn't designed for this kind of pressure. Heading to the surface, sir. Hey, what's the matter with this guy, Charles? I mean, I get that he's dead and all, but still. This is the neural network's equivalent of PTSD. If a victim dies suddenly, their consciousness can modulate an alternate perception of reality based on their preferences and environment. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Right. What do we have here? Tereshkova, do you copy? Yes, dear comrade. The communication is restored. So, where's that head of yours? My head is where it's supposed to be. But Claire's head should be somewhere on your floor. Like I said earlier, something is crushing it with terrible force. Like a migraine. Like an excavator. Like an entire mountain. I get it. I really do. All your whining is giving me a migraine, too. I'll go look for it. Looks like a maze for kids. This will be a cakewalk. Jumpy little thing, ain't ya? How do I rotate you, huh?
Hey, I think I get it. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah! Gotcha! Nice! Easy. Summer morn when warmth and beauty mingle. At the past turn, a carcass lay a sprawl. Upon a bed of shingle, legs raised like some old. Found the head. We gotta keep moving. Charles, any idea how much time we got left? I cannot say for sure, but definitely not much. Gotcha. Charles, so after Dr. Sechenov created the new Gamma Connectors, he destroyed the old Beta Connectors, right? Officially, yes. But only the technology used to manufacture the Beta Connectors was destroyed. The pair of experimental rings were simply removed from all records and declared recycled. Why go to all that trouble? He didn't want to destroy the fruits of his painstaking labor. Dr. Sechenov simply kept them as souvenirs. So where are they now? They were somewhere in the Sechenov Science Center here at Facility 3826. And they apparently disappeared after the malfunction began. Apparently. You see what's going on here, don't you? No one knows anything for sure right now. The rings could be on a lab bench somewhere. Get over here! destroyed by rampaging robots. There won't be any need for them in collecting. Dr. Sechenov and his scientists will be able to solve any problem without him. I couldn't agree more. Get over here. Ah. How do you like that? What you staring at? you know if I find the rest. Right. Installing the head. Double two. Seven. 
nine nine one zero zero oh hey rise and shine good morning to you thank you dear comrade please be careful there are aggressive robots everywhere yeah i noticed what did you do to get dismembered i tried to rescue the living personnel of the exhibition complex monstrous atrocities are being committed here robots are killing people this is unthinkable how did you manage to survive, dear comrade? No time to explain. We need to activate military drill mode. Scanning cycle. Module. Limb. Arm. Left. Found. Location Pavlov floor. Uh, could you be a little more specific? No! This is terrible! It plunged into something warm and sticky. Oh my! It is red polymer. Disgusting! I am sorry, dear comrade. This is the only data I have available. I hope I managed to help you. You sure did. Access granted. out. Watch out! Wow, a lock. Didn't see that coming. Sorry, what? Whales. Whales are my speciality. I'm the resident cytologist here, although there's been very little for me to study so far. But I love them dearly. They're magnificent creatures. So, have I piqued your curiosity? <laughs> sure thing. Take your time. Fact number one. As you know, we all emerged from the sea. But only whales were clever enough to go back. Fifty million years ago, they were large, paradigitic mammals, and yet they preferred the sea. 
It's admirable, isn't it? Fact number two. A grey whale's tongue weighs over four tons, which is about the same weight as an adult elephant. And you can fit up to 50 men on it. Imagine that. Huge. Fact number three. Whales pick up sounds not with their ears, like you and I, but with their lower jaw. They sense vibrations and underwater waves. Amazing. Fact number four. Whales are the only mammals besides us that can sing. A whale's song can last up to 40 minutes and have distinct motifs or even genres. Fact number five. Whales can dive up to three and a half kilometers deep. Oh, come on. Enough is enough. Access granted. into a polymer vessel thanks to the brilliance of Soviet scientists. Polymer mimetic adaptation owes its existence to these amazing animals. Nowadays, polymers are made to adapt inside the human body without triggering rejection. This polymer whale is the first step towards the prolongation of human life. Hmm. Thanks to the talent of Soviet scientists. Still, this is a marvelous exhibit. May I ask you something, Major? If you could live on in another form after death, would you? Only under really extreme circumstances. Like, if my legs got ripped off or something. But all in all, does the idea of polymer immortality seem acceptable to you? Nah, if we don't get fresh blood every generation, we'll never have any progress. I heard that in a class once. You're not exactly an optimist, are you, Major? Not anymore. Here's an interesting fact. This whale was obtained by Mikhail Stockhausen, who piloted a whaling vessel for an entire week. I really couldn't care less, Charles. What's that crap in the canisters? Be careful. That is a specimen called Pliush, or Ivy. It is extremely dangerous. Yeah, I've seen this crap before. And of course, the ripped-off arm is in there too. Why could it just be lying in a corner somewhere?
That polymer son of a bitch almost took me out. Let's hope another one of those freaks doesn't come crawling out of the next canister. According to my data, the second canister is sealed properly. Finally, I got all her parts. Here's your left arm. <laughs> Go ahead, fix yourself up. You're making me better, comrade. All her body parts assembled. What now? Self-repair procedure complete. I am ready for service. Thank you, comrade. We will now initiate the launch sequence. First launch code sequence generated. Please confirm that launch code sequence is matched. Second launch code sequence generated. Launch code sequences match. Initiating BDNH mode of operational change. New mode, military drill. Whew, I think we made it. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, dear comrade. All employees and evacuate the complex immediately. Please, comrade Molotov, I beg you. It's not safe here. So it's still dangerous. I was told everything was under control. There was a minor issue, but Major Nichayev, uh, forgive me, Agent P3 has already dealt with it. What exactly did he deal with? There's blood all over the place. That's not blood. It's paint. Comrade Sechenov. You're playing a dangerous game here. Greetings, Comrade Molotov. I don't follow you. What game? You know what I'm talking about, Comrade Sechenov. Your local malfunction is actually a worldwide catastrophe. Your robots in combat mode. Countless human casualties. Need I go on? Oh, please do. But first I'd like to know how you obtained this information. From Viktor Vasilyevich Petrov, your engineer, an outstanding roboticist, an honored citizen of the Soviet Union. That's what he used to be. Now he's prisoner number 230385, sentenced to community service at the Vavilov complex. By your order, you are in direct violation of Soviet law. As a minister, the minister of industry, you know the consequences. Here is the procurator general's decree. The upcoming launch of the collective neural network will be canceled and you'll be the subject of a full-fledged investigation. Am I making myself clear, Comrade Sechenov? Comrade Molotov, may I have a word with you in private? <laughs> Do you really think that's going to change anything? <laughs> Fine. I'll meet you here in 15 minutes. Mikhail, meet me at the landing pad. Right away, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Aren't you in a hurry to see your master, Major? Stockhausen seems awfully eager. Is something wrong, Major? 
Major, I asked you a question. Lock the door. What's going on? I said lock the door.
Wake up, my mother. P3, my boy. You're alive. Uh, I guess so, yeah. Comrade Sechenov! The government commission... they're dead. Molotov's body is here. What about the others? How many people were with him? F Fifteen or so. Some of them may have survived. Find out. Uh, what the fuck happened here? Who the fuck did this? Guess the robots got in. You were fortunate to escape unharmed. C Comrade Sechenov, all the members of the Commission are dead. All of them. This is tragic, but it changes nothing. Collective must still be activated. I couldn't agree more, but what should we do with the dead Politburo member? We don't have a lot of options here. Right? Handle it. Mikhail, head to the radio station and make sure power to the government line has been cut. Make it quick. Yes, sir, but the Kremlin will be expecting a report from Comrade Molotov. I will personally inform the Politburo of this tragedy. Hurry, Mikhail. We don't have much time. Left. Help her. How are you doing, my boy? Not good. I failed you again. This is... too much. It's too much for all of us, this terrible incident.
was that? A tribute to the departed. Conversation off. Uh, we've got a problem. The central hub is broadcasting. Someone is trying to send information to the West. Who? Who could have done that? There are only two people who could have done it. You and Petrov. Petrov's dead. I saw his body. Just his body. Petrov is first and foremost a head. It was his body. How's that possible? Filatov. Hmm. When your accomplice is a neurosurgeon of Dr. Filatova's caliber, then anything is possible. Have you traced the signature? Petrov is masking his signature, but I'm sure he's in one of the scientific centers. Did you hear that, my boy? Go find him. Right now. Why would a data storage need to walk around? So it could run off someplace and get lost along with all its important information? It won't run off. It's as loyal to Dr. Sechenov as the ballerina twins. When Dr. Sechenov releases it into the outside world, it always remains near him as an additional security measure. Security? So it can attack people? What do you think, Comrade Major? Why would a neuropolymer substance capable of dissolving a human being in mere seconds need to be able to move independently? Shit on a shingle. You're telling me that Jelly Man can sneak up behind someone and kill them instantly without leaving a trace? It does remind me of a certain person who died under mysterious circumstances and without witnesses after slipping and falling into a bath. Crispy critters. Yeah, makes you think. Started. Fading data. 